Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Popeye's spicy chicken sandwich. Oh, is that what you had for lunch? I did. I had that mm. for lunch. I've been eating real good. I've been and, then, smart. and then you had the Popeye's chicken and sandwich. And then I was like, you know what? I deserve it. I now. How long you've been? Like, you've been working out. Like, doing your walks. I go on walks and stuff. Okay, you've been. It. It's still, it's working yeah. out. Yeah. Um, how long have you been doing that for? And eating healthy for? Uh, well, you've been doing it for a while. I, I, I was doing it, and then COVID happened, and everything stopped. Uh-huh. I just stopped. Didn't and care. so, but then you restarted because you just said you were yeah. doing really good. So yeah, you restarted. I'm two weeks in to okay. being consistent, and then you need, you needed your cheat day. Cheat? Well, not day. No, I just had a sandwich. Cheat? Cheat meal? Yeah. And so, yeah, it was good, man. Did you get it with fries? Why you gotta bring the fries up? I'm just asking. It's, it's not very many. Very small bag in there. Oh, very you, small. You got with a small a, bag it, of fries. It came with a tiny bag of fries, right. and I didn't eat them all. Okay, that's good. And now for the sauce, did you tell them to go less on the sauce because a lot of mayo? I'm, I don't want to be high maintenance. They got a busy job. I don't oh. want to give them extra instructions. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, hey man, whatever. However you do it. However fine. you do it, add extra sauce, you kind know. of a thing. And you know why I like it better. Is better than what? Better than uh, the Christian one. Chick-fil-A? Chick-fil-A. Yeah, and it is better. Uh, it, yeah, it is better. I mean, listen, neither one of them are amazing sandwiches, They're, but it's better. It's better. Popeye's is better. Popeye's is better than, than Chick-fil-A. Than the Christian chicken. Um, yeah, yeah, because uh, I, I, I prefer it because of the way that the sauce tastes and the way that the chicken batter on the chicken tastes uh, i like everything about it better I like the size better I like everything about it better see i think i agree i agree with you that the batter is better now raising canes the sauce is better okay you know that they're on my list so i couldn't possibly know <laughs> what the it's like i can't i can't amazing yeah. i don't even know why why is it on your list? I will you never, exp- I will never. I want you to explain to everyone why Raising Cane's is on your list. Okay, well, first of all, it's named after the first murderer in the Bible. Oh, okay, is, is so that why? number that's, one. That's the, that's number the reason one. why. No, because I went there, I don't know, it was like Valentine's Day or something. Okay. Steve McCoy's talking about, you got to go to Raising yeah, Cane's. Yeah, it's really, really gotta good. got to go really yeah. good. I'm like, fine, I love chicken. I'm yep. going to go get some Raising Cane's. So I go there mm-hmm. at like 6 p.m. and I checked on the interwebs to make sure like there was like nothing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's open. It's so open. I, I drive all the way. It took it, like it, 25 it, it, minutes it to get there. It didn't tell you. It didn't say like, hey, the, it, there might be some service interruption because of X, Y, Z, right? Nope. Okay. Nope. No, but, but I'm, I'm glad you're using the, the European way of saying the alphabet. That's nice. Anyways. So um, I need you. So I get there and it's closed. They closed it for valentine's day wait what yeah and i was like what the heck and so you know what it drove 25 minutes and uh, i think so you know what i have never gone back and i i drive by it all the time and i always look oh, at it and i go so good. on my list don't miss it mm-hmm. mm. i'm punishing them yeah not really oh yeah no 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 they no. don't get the jojo no jojo you, goes to popeyes now you understand that our uh like our budgets are public they're not missing you Oh, they're missing me. They're not missing. Yeah, you. it's not about the money. It's about the presence. They don't. They don't. Oh, they, no, they're definitely not missing that. Yeah. No, they. They. I like you. I'm I don't an miss influencer, it. Jimmy. I'm an influencer. You're I, telling me you're a chicken influencer. I'm an everything influencer. I influence it all. All right. All right. Okay. okay. That's what you know. What we are influential public I like how, figures. I like how you now pivoted there because you sounded so arrogant and like I am an influencer. Oh, yeah. I am an influencer. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are. Well, I'm transitioning because we were talking about me. Mm-hmm. And so I am an influencer, but now we're going to transition to us. We are influencers. That's why Pete, cause we're super, I mean, we are super mm. influential. Oh, okay. there's, there's like, there's like, uh, Oprah. Yeah. Osteen. Uh huh. Um, the Pope. Uh huh. Underneath that. Yes. And then, uh, like we're somewhere under that. Oh, somewhere, somewhere under that. Under I don't that? know exactly what like the how, ranking how is. How far down? Well, under down that. a little bit. Yeah. Like a little bit's like three million. I don't know. <laughs> But we get emails and people emails. ask us questions and they want to know what we think about stuff. Oh. And so we're going to we're going to look at a couple of you and I'm going to read this to you. Now, some of these are a little longer. So yeah. just bear with it. Just take it in. Enjoy the enjoy the um, um, the correspondence from some of our I'm listeners. I'm not sure I'm going to go ahead and read this person's name. No, nah, let's not read names. All right. But we'll call him uh, Sizzlin' Matt. Subject. <laughs> Bigfoot follow-up talk in regards to spiritual warfare. Now, Jimmy and I have not even talked about these. No, we have not. We just saw that these are got some good potential questions yep, in yep, there. So here we go. 
Hey, Joe and Jimmy. I love the podcast. I want to preface my question for you as I'm not crazy guy with a foil hat on in my mother's basement and that I'm a regular married guy with kids. I agree with you that Bigfoot isn't real, but <laughs> it is very fun to talk about. Right on. I often use the threat of Trollocs. Do you know what that is? Trollocs? No. Trollocs to get my kid into his car seat faster at night time in parking lots. Now for my question. Google Trolloc. Okay, you go ahead. All right. We all know Satan is deceiver and that he will use lies to lead people away from Christ by giving their depraved hearts what they want. When it comes to myths like Bigfoot or aliens and people have exper- quote unquote experiences with them, is it possible that it could be demonic in nature where they do see or experience something, but instead of being a real Bigfoot or alien is actually a demon leading them astray? Well, this isn't something we can have hard proof for. It seems plausible in a screw tape slash wormwood sort of way. If people kept looking for Bigfoot, thinking he's the missing link to evolution or aliens, which would rule out humans as unique to the universe, thus disproving the existence of a holy God, or at least help sow doubt for our creator. This isn't something I fully land on having a firm yes or no myself, but it's no surprise to see the magicians have some sort of mystical connection when dealing with Moses and God prevails over the little copies of his power, which is displayed before Pharaoh. And we could probably, we I think we got the question, there. right? Okay. So it's, it, 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 um, but then he does go into like prosperity, Moloch, pro-choice movement. Yeah. Good stuff. But the basic question, demons, aliens, Bigfoot. Uh, well, okay. What's Trolloc? Okay. First of all, it's super nerd stuff. Um, uh, a trolloc, and you pronounced it correctly, hmm. is a type of shadow spawn created in the Age of Legends, which is a game apparently, that comprises the bulk of the Dark One's armies. A crossing of human and animal stock, their physical characteristics are a blending of both lineages, horrifying almost all that come into contact with them. While capable of speech, they possess an intellect inferior to that of other sentient races and have proven difficult to utilize in battle unless supervised. So it's like it's like D&D kind of stuff, uh, Shadow Spawn card games. So stuff. homeboy, I often use the threat of Trollocs to get my kid into his car seat faster at nighttime in parking lots. Yeah, it's, it, that, that's no better than using uh, Wrinkles the Clown as a as a threat. <laughs> People are using Wrinkles the Clown to scare their kids. At least they were a couple of years ago. Kids freaking out over that. You know Wrinkles the Clown? No. Oh. Now, don't you guys use Krampus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you that's because Jen's Krampus, from Germany. So and yeah. then doesn't she also do like the uh, Belschnickel or whatever? That, that's, you know, that, what's it's so funny that Dwight Schrute actually cited that story. Yeah, about the scissor man. That's the yeah scissor man. Yeah. That Don't what suck she does? your thumb. My, my 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 wife has the actual children's book when she was a kid that was read to her, and it's uh it's this German. It's all in German, right? It's, and uh, but there are pictures, mm. and the mom's saying you better stop sucking your thumb or the scissor man's gonna come and cut off your thumbs. And the little kids like whatever, mom. So mom leaves. He looks around, pops that fake thumb in his mouth and starts sucking away. Scissor man kicks in the door. Giant scissors cuts off his thumbs and they're laying on the floor with blood dripping out of his hands awesome so awesome yeah and then i saw that it was on the office and i was like you know, hey, I, that's I, a real thing you know what i want you to know right there is god's providence mm-hmm. because if jen didn't have that sort of upbringing that kind of oh, yeah. twistedness right you had no chance no way she, she no you had no shot there was her. one woman you in better, the you universe better think I oh, I do. You, i hope you are i do and her mom every day mm. her mom oh her mom mm. her mom gave her that book her mom read her that's that book. That's true. That's true. That is true. Now, what the Lord, or I'm sorry, not the Lord, what the enemy wanted for, you know, evil. No, that was it. They were just toughening her up. They had yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but they didn't want you. And so, but uh, it, it became good. There we go. Okay. So big picture here. Um, so Joe, is Bigfoot a demonic manifestation? Okay. Uh, the, 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 actually, it's, 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 it's a fairly popular theory out there that aliens, ghosts, that Bigfoot, uh, UFOs, that mm-hmm. all of these things are actually connected, that they are not individual uh, characters or um, beings and manifestations that have no relationship, that are, but they're, they're all coming from another dimension and they manifest mm. themselves. Those are kind of linked, kind of the same. Now, have you written a paper on it yet? No. 
<laughs> no. Can we peer review it? But this, like, listen, that basic idea is in the secular world. It's in the Christian world. Now, Christians would say, well, we think it's demonic forces that are manifesting these things. Other people would say, well, no, they're, they're a more basic elemental spirit uh-huh. uh, that are manifesting themselves in this way. It's interesting because there is a, let me see if I can bring it up real quick. So there is a death metal band. It's more of a, a technical progressive death metal band. Anyway, mm. it's called Septic Flesh. Ah. Right, oh, so. technical progressive? No, 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 no. It's not technical progressive. Okay, okay, yeah. I it's like mechanical it. progressive. Oh, is that what it is? Yes, okay, yes. good. <laughs> now, come on now, Joe. If you're going to do it, mm-hmm. sign it right. Okay, so um, so let me get the lyrics up here. So in one of their songs called Communion, mm. listen to what they say in light of what this guy all asks. Right, okay? All right, I, I want to hear this. Uh, so... I'm going to skip all the way down to the middle. Some have seen your trembling lights dancing in the cloudy night. You appear as strange machines. What's that? Uh, UFO. Right? Changing form to fit the scene. Demons, angels, poltergeists, laughing as they play with minds, altering the face of truth. So that seems as lie to fools. So it's even in like this song by this death metal band, like that idea. So is it possible that demons are manifesting themselves hmm. in these ways to deceive people? Yeah, but I don't think so. That's my answer. All right, all, all right. right. Well, J- Jimmy, any thoughts about Bigfoot? No, Aliens, have, demons? N- no, I've got no thoughts Basically, on this. we're talking about the uh, History Channel at this point. I think it's pretty much nah, what Listen, this is. when we get to Chupacabra, then I'll, okay. then I'll, I'll all right. go ahead and... Send all of your Chupacabra questions to <laughs> at Doc and Devo. <laughs> all, right, go, all right, move on to the next one. La La Rona? That's another one you could do? <laughs> yeah, you don't I mean, know La La nope, Rona? Nope. Okay. Nope, so nope, he's nope. fake Mexican. Okay. Uh, I think I've already said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, here we go. Pedo Baptism. Hey guys. Hey guys. Thank you for your ministry. I appreciate listening to you talk about issues related to faith. Joe, you mentioned the other day that you used to believe in infant baptism. I am curious as to which factors were most influential in your changing in your changing your position to believers baptism. Thanks again for all you do. Blessings in Christ. Chad. 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 Chud. We're calling you Chud. Um which was a classic 80s horror movie. Okay, so, Jimmy, were you ever pedo? Or did you ever go with that direction? Did, was that ever a part of your upbringing? You were in, like, Assemblies of God, which are more Baptistic, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I was raised Catholic, so. So, so yeah, you were, you were, by default, pedo in being Catholic. I was Catholic. baptized as an infant, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, look at you. I was baptized, like, three times. My phone's your phone, you're crazy. right? Gee whiz. Okay, um... All right, well, I didn't grow up in the church at all, so I didn't have any preconceived ideas about baptism. When I became a Christian, it was at a Baptist church. Um, I went to Moody, and as I began to study Reformed theology, I was uh, the, the Pado baptist system uh, appealed to me greatly because of covenant theology, um, because of the historical arguments, and the greatest theologians that I read were all Pado. And so the more I studied it, the more of a consistent and biblical argument I found it to be. But as I continued to study, and so I was just going that way. Um, but I, what kept bringing me out of it, because I guess I had embraced it uh, intellectually, but not like whole hog, like, mm-hmm, okay, I'm going to mm-hmm. join a Presbyterian church. But I got to that point where, yes, I think that this is the best argument. Ooh, now, why did you think it was the best argument? Um, because I hadn't yet studied the Baptist perspective yet. It had been assumed, right? right it was like right. default, like, oh, I was saved in a Baptist church. When you get baptized, this is how. So, and you are a rebel my nature. So, like, if you, you know, you, you like to push back against whatever's I, going I on. I like to find out, like, you know, what's, what's, what's yeah, really yeah. going push on Push back, yeah. So, I... Uh, Revolt, yes. So, <laughs> I am revolting. So, I, I pretty much came to that point where I'm like, okay, this is really satisfying, but let me go back and look at the Baptist view and... As I began to, to, to work through scripture about it, just, just reading the scriptures, not the books, yeah. began to pull me back the other way because I could not make a clear, purely biblical case for it or as clear of a biblical case for it in mm. my mind. Not, not, not one that was as satisfying to me. Um, and then as I began to work through covenant theology again, but from a Baptist perspective, um, I saw that 
I that covenant theology does not inherently demand, in my estimation, uh, that level of consistency mm-hmm. that you would maintain the infant right from old covenant to new covenant. And then, um, and then as time has gone on, and I've been able to read more now, especially in the last ten years, uh, a lot of seventeenth century uh, Baptist covenant theology. I've been very, very, very much strengthened in that, especially thanks to guys um, like Pascal Deneau. Mm, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And whatnot. So, yeah, I guess, it, honestly, it, what pulled me away from it was I found it more biblically satisfying. Uh, and once I studied the Baptist position, I realized, oh, the argument is not, we ain't seeing no babies getting dunked in the Bible. That's not the argument. No. The no, argument no. is from covenant theology and... Uh, and, and how to properly understand how the covenants relate together. Uh, it is not a dispensational belief. It is. It fits well within, I think, uh, the Protestant historic reformed line of churches, though there are obviously some pretty big differences. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, so we got this, um, Ooh. We got this email, some pushback. So, a little bit of pushback. I don't know yeah, if it no, was it's, no, it's not bad. It's just, yeah. it, it just it's friendly pushback. Um, in the George Floyd, this is, uh, from a guy, I'm not going to mention his name. Uh, in the George Floyd episode, you basically said, if I can paraphrase, uh, that even if George Floyd had done the crime that he was suspected of, which was robbery, he did not deserve to die for it. I agree entirely with this statement and basically everything else you said in the episode. You are obviously a very wise person. Okay. Uh, this is a tragedy and we should mourn it and we should be angry, by the way. Now. In the next episode, uh, you gave me some cognitive dissonance. You made reference to business owners who defended their businesses from looters by standing guard with guns, thereby implying, and this is where you make a mistake, brother, thereby implying that someone who attempted to break into their business would be shot and very likely killed. However, looting is not necessarily the same thing as threatening someone's life. Very correct. And these business owners were welcome to keep themselves out of harm's way by staying home instead of posting up at their place of business. In a sense, they forced themselves into a situation where they may have to defend themselves with violence and end the life of someone whose crime would have essentially been theft. And then he explains like a little bit of his background to let us know, listen, I'm, you know, I'm not anti-gun, um, you know, I'm not anti-violence when it's mm, necessary yeah. and, and all of that. So uh, he just wanted to hear us talk about this. So, Jimmy, as the guy that's not like the gun guy, yeah, and yeah. I'm not that, that I'm a gun guy or the gun guy, but I'm more of a gun guy than you are. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yep. Um, you're not a gun guy. What do you, how do you think, how do you personally feel about store owners, whether it's, you know, some of the Korean shop owners in the 92 LA riots? Mm-hmm. Or uh, some of the people that were defending their, uh, their businesses now with firearms, even though people were just coming in to steal goods, what do you think about armed defense of those businesses? Well, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Uh, and because I think it was more, it's, it's more of a deterrent, right? If an individual sees someone's there or someone's right, you know, up on top of their roof and they're armed, they're not going to, I, I would say they're less likely to try to loot that place. I have no problem with them uh, defending uh, their business and looking to deter individuals. Now, here's where I would look and say, I'm not sure what I would do in a situation, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I I do mean that. I mean, I, you know, I don't have guns, um, but I have had people steal, and I know it, and I'm not going to go at them, um, uh, like fire them, you know, over toilet paper. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, all right, if someone really needed toilet paper, they can freaking have the toilet paper yeah. and take it They're home. They're not their selling family. that toilet paper on the street and making a profit. Correct. <laughs> exactly. Now, then again, this is different. Right. This, this, right, you know, the, the looting that we're talking about is different than what I mm. uh, minimally experience, right? Uh, so, yeah, for me, I think it's fine because they're, it's, it's, it's a deterrent. They're looking to stop people from even engaging in that activity. I think it's also important to note a, a couple of things. Uh, one is that a lot of these businesses that would post up and defend their property, um, they, if they, if that store, they're not just getting robbed. That those stores get destroyed, and so it, they may not recover from that. They may not have the right kind of insurance or enough insurance to recover after. It's been hard enough. I mean, with there's COVID. Yeah, exactly. There's stores now that are that are shutting down because of it. So. 
they're protecting not just their possessions, they're protecting their livelihood. It's not like, oh, somebody's going to steal my pants. Remember they said that drunk lady stole the pants out of your car? Or was it a dude? Drunk dude or drunk lady? Lady. Drunk lady yeah. walking down your street and bopped into your car. And why yeah. were your pants? I don't even know why yeah, you took off your pants in the car. She didn't take my pants. She stole your pants. No. No. I remember something about your pants no, were in the my car. my pants were not in the car. There was a, uh, there was a bear's... Uh, uh, no, it's pants. No, bear's yeah. hoodie. Pants. 100%. Or bear's jersey. 100%. No, not it's 100%. It's on the air. People can go look it up. You guys go look it up. There was no pants. Find out no what pants. episode it is where Jamie, where Jimmy talks about his pants being in the car. All right, so anyways, so that that that's one thing. Second, um, my pants in the car was so you weird. You left your that's pants in the weird, car. I know, that's why, that's that's why everybody was talking about it. No one was talking okay. about it. Um, Looney's not a... So, yeah. Uh, let me find this thing. So in a sense, they force themselves into a situation where they may have to defend themselves with violence. Okay, they're not forcing themselves into a situation. They are where they belong, their own property. That's their yeah, store. Yeah, yeah. So they are there. People are forcing their way into that store. So that would be another area where I would say, like, I wouldn't think about it quite like that. Um, also, there is a lot of violence. Uh, people are, are breaking in, and it's it, we don't know. Like, if they're breaking in... And stealing stuff, sure, okay, they're, they, most of those people probably don't intend to murder somebody, but some of them do have bad intentions. And mm-hmm. if you're there, they may stomp you. So um, you don't really know. Now, for me, um, my advice would be get out of the area. If there's going to be riots and looting, my job is to get my family out of the area. Yep, yep. Um, I'm, I'm very big on self-defense, self-protection, and, and all of that, but... My job, primarily, first and foremost, is to protect my family. So, okay, stuff, I'll deal with the stuff. I want to protect my life, and if, if I, my life gets taken, then, well, you know. So I think it's better to avoid this sort of a situation, but I think they have, I, it's clearly, they have every right to be there uh, to deter. I, I totally agree with you, Jimmy. Um, and so, yeah, uh, nobody should be, killed like so let's compare the things if george floyd um had was was guilty of oh no george floyd actually um i think this guy might have actually confused a couple of things or maybe i did when we were talking about it the first time but uh, george floyd was convicted of or was accused of passing off a counterfeit 20 yeah 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 okay so um and um uh, Ahmad, the a previous guy that was shot by two white racist dudes. Um, now, and we don't know that they were actually racist. Um, he was um, accused of stealing, or they thought that he was stealing. So uh, the difference is, is this person is running away. He's not running towards you. So there's a big difference between you're in your store and they're running into your store with mm-hmm. ill intent. So I don't think that's totally the same. So. Big picture, um, I, I'm inclined to say, hey, guys, uh, don't stay in the store. But if your livelihood, if the future of my family depends on that store, um, then, yeah, I, I would probably get my family out of there. And then I'd go back and post up and let everybody – I just put a sign out there. We're armed in here, and uh, don't, don't, don't come knocking. And mm-hmm. they, probably, they probably wouldn't. So that's, that's no, how I just throw rocks and stuff at your windows. You know? That's fine. Windows, are, windows aren't that expensive no, compared no. to the whole store getting burned down. Um, anyway, I, I, there's been a. <laughs> oh, when when the pandemic was when we were deep into the pandemic, I had more people than ever ask me about guns. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. From the church and from yep, outside yep. the church, uh, and then when the looting started, like mm-hmm. everybody was like, "Hey, <laughs> it's like you're just I'm just wondering, like, how should we think about this, or so, or how do I go forward with you know in Illinois? How does it work? So lots of questions about that stuff." Yeah, people offering like, "Hey, man, you want to borrow?" I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna borrow your gun." First of all, that's illegal. Like, I'm not. Well, doing you can that. borrow a gun. No, I can't. You would need a FOID yeah, card. Yeah, and I have none of that um, to handle. Yep, and I've uh, got none in Illinois, which is unconstitutional. But whatever. All right, Jimmy. One more uh, question. This came in through Instagram, and so here it is. Let's talk through this. This guy says, "My wife and I are struggling to find the balance, if there is one, to loving our brothers and sisters well." and rejecting critical race theory. Um, We want to be broken over an image bearer's life being taken and weep with those brothers and sisters who have been deeply wounded by sin and injustice in this world. 
We know that unity in Christ is foundational to unity amongst believers. We know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is what changes hearts of stone to flesh. But where do I love my brother and sister well without also supporting or being associated with CRT? I know this is lengthy, but this has been so heavy for us as we see our city protest and cry out for change. We've seen brothers and sisters truly hurt and burdened by this. Thanks. What do you think? Well, I think the... So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm a little... I don't understand why being united means I support that position. Right. Like, I guess that's the part I'm not understanding here, right? Because... I'm united, like, with Nick Batzig, mm -hmm. but I don't support his position on pedo baptism. Right, right. Like, I, I don't, I don't. I guess that's the part I'm not understanding. So, because, I, 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 yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to get. I think, I think the context here is there are these people protesting. Okay, and there's this inclination. I want to go out there and protest with them, but I'm afraid if I go out there, then I have officially joined, or I seem to be tacitly endorsing the black lives matter organization not just the idea that black lives matter which i think is very true and good mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. black lives matter and by the way oh here we go by the way here we go i know everybody wants to say all lives matter and yes all lives matter the but the, the the basic and i finally saw a comedian making the same point so i feel rather Michael justified Chay, yeah oh was it yeah that uh, i watched the same thing today so but i'd been making this argument with my kids that um I tell my wife that I love her. If she were to ask me, if my kids were to ask me, do you love me? I wouldn't say I love everybody. I would say I love you. And I do love everybody, but I love you. It's, it's not that much difference. When you're saying Black Lives Matter, you have to say it. And let's maybe, maybe, you, maybe you believe you have to say it because uh, you're convinced that large sections of our country do not, does not believe that Black Lives Matter. Or maybe you say it because you know that at the very least our African-American brothers and sisters do not feel very loved. Yeah, yeah. Either way, you can say Black Lives Matter and be orthodox, not embrace CRT. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, I don't... Oh, you heard it here first. I don't, like, I, I, I wouldn't... Listen to this progressive. <laughs> I don't have a problem with people uh, protesting in general and uh, yeah. people going out and joining the protests over... Um, the injustice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so for, here's the thing. Like, when I read this, you know, you want to weep with those who weep. Uh, that's really good. But you're saying, um, i got to find it. But how do I do this well without also supporting or being associated with CRT? Don't worry about who associates you with what. Yeah. Right? Like, I, people are going to, people will see. There, there, there is a small but very loud, um, theologically deranged group of people out there that like to say that Jimmy and I are Marxists, um, that we aren't Reformed Baptists, mm -hmm. that we are ungodly, and all these things. I, do, I, I don't care. What, no. am, what am I going to do with that? And, and here's the thing. Like, I care what my friends think of me in an appropriate sense. I care what my church thinks about me. I care what my family thinks about me. I don't really care what other people think of me. I no, and, and here's the thing. The people that do know us mm -hmm. uh, would ask for clarity. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jimmy, I saw you out there with Black Lives Matter. You, uh, you think that uh, all white people are racist? And you yes. think that our, all of our laws no, are No, I mean, no, 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 yeah, I don't. Okay, yeah, you listen, we're on the podcast now. Oh, yeah, my bad, my bad. Yeah, I can't, I can't yeah, get my real views here. No, no, you're in the spin zone. Spin zone. No, yeah. no, no, no. You have to be the no spin no, zone. It's the spin zone. Oh, here. this is, a, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so like part of part of but yeah, people ask, and people we have had that we've had mm -hmm. had people text us mm -hmm. and ask us straightforward questions, you know, which is fine, more than welcome to. We're we're not we're not scholars and experts on CRT, but you know, one of the aspects of CRT is that uh, you believe that the the, the laws and the, the very nature of the way that our country has been organized and founded is inherently, currently discriminatory. Uh, towards blacks and yeah. oppresses them. And I actually, I don't believe that. I think that there's a lot of racism, a lot of injustice that needs to be addressed. But, um, and, I'm, I'm, and, that and that's just like, like getting that clarity because people just assume, right? Mm -hmm. Like they assume based on uh, what they, what their preconceived notions are. Mm -hmm. So like a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, maybe a year ago, uh, I had someone from another organization, another podcast, 
associated with that organization call me and ask me some pretty direct questions. Mm -hmm. And why? uh, Because about CRT. Because of your mouth. Well, because on the podcast, (laughs) we're we're talking. We're talking. And I go, I actually agree with you on everything. Yeah. Like every single, he kept going like, yeah, you agree with us on everything. I go, yeah. What I don't agree with is how you're going about it. Mm-hmm. I think that I don't think that's God honoring, right? Yeah. Uh, and how you know the tone behind or whatever else behind that. Oh, tone police. Oh, here we go. Tone, call like, you like, tone loke. Tone. <laughs> I'm like that's the part I don't agree with. I don't agree with the aggressive nature of things when there's a there's an opportunity to lovingly care and walk people through that are don't know better and you can help yeah. them through that in such a more profound way so many zealous smart committed christians suck at winning people over with argument with, with it's like so they they might be right in what they are saying but mm-hmm. they they have lost the they don't have the ability to bring somebody from the other side towards the, if they're wrong, towards the truth. And I know some people can say, well, that's the job of the spirit. I'm just supposed to, call. listen, um, look at how Paul talks about how he ministered to people, how they approached and planted mm-hmm. these churches, how they approached these cultures, tenderly, gentle, with love. So um, yeah, Jimmy and I, when dealing with people who err, um, and we're dealing with Christians in general, right? Typically, uh, we, we try to be conversational, uh, polite, kind. Yeah. We try to understand why they think the way that yep. they think, yep. and then yep. Yep. show them where we're coming from. Instead of just you know turning the big cannons on them, um, you know, lighting the fuse of the cannon with a burning rebel flag. You know, instead of doing that, you know, we just try to talk to them. Yeah, and in that in that way, we gained a brother, right? Like, yeah, that's not that, the whole not point. that that individual changed their view because I actually agree with their view, but it was more about uh, being able to stay in contact, pray for each other, see how things are going, like. It was so much more unity that came yeah. out of that phone call right. than sitting there trying to blast each other for some odd reason, uh, which I, I, to this date, still don't understand uh, behind, you know, some of the things behind that. So, um, and, and Joe knows, I think we're, we're a bit more, um, I'm not going to say, yeah, we're a bit more aggressive with each other oh, and, yeah. with, and, with, and with people within our church, right? We're very direct. We're very direct. And uh, again, I know aggressive is not the right word, but we're, we're much more direct confrontational because we have a relationship. And yeah. that individual knows that we love them, care for them, and are actually concerned mm-hmm. for their spiritual well-being. Yeah. Like, in other words, we know how to talk to our people. Yeah. Like uh, some people, you, I, I've, no, I've known people who have very bold ideas. They state them very plainly, but they're actually very sensitive. So if I approach them the way that they generally are, which is we, usually we feel very justified when we do that, yeah, they shut down. Yep. But as bold as they are and as plainly as they speak, if if I know I got to approach them a little bit more subtly. Yeah. And hanging out with people that I disagree with has never been a problem for me. Um, listening to other people that I disagree with has never been a problem for me. No. And listen, uh, I know you're concerned about being associated with, uh, with the wrong ideas and philosophies, but Jesus was constantly uh, blacklisted by the Pharisees for, uh, for his association hmm. with the wrong kinds of people. And they accused him of things that weren't true. And they accused him of being a drunkard and a glutton, even because he drank wine and because he ate meals with all of these pagans. And they weren't true. So here, here's, here's my thing. Be super clear on what you believe. Yes. Be kind about it. Yep. And don't worry about it. Yeah. How about that? I like it. Be clear. Be, be kind. kind. Don't worry about it. No, no, no. You got to have like, don't worry. Be chill. No, wait. Be, be clear. Be kind. Be kind. Be, be still, aloof. Be still and know I'm the Lord. No, be aloof. Be, be a goof. No. Yeah, there you go. No, there you go. I don't know. I don't know, but I um, see. I like the conversations. I like that. Be still. That's probably better. The the um, like we're having great conversations at my house, right? Mm. Uh, Jen and I are having great conversations. There are some good conversations happening online, but honestly, it's just mostly a nightmare. No, I'd rather have these so conversations bad. in person, right? Mm. Because. I need to be able to see someone face to face and to, cause there I can gauge, are they tracking with me? Have I, maybe, maybe was I unclear on a certain subject? Uh, maybe did I 
offend unnecessarily? Yeah. Like, is there an opportunity here to reward this so, uh, so that it's, it's understood better? Because I know the way I am. I know I could just kind of just talk mm-hmm. and I just say what's on my mind. Uh, and so that's why I think, yeah, at home conversations are a lot more or in person conversations are a lot more conducive to change. Yeah. Well, let's all go ahead and just get a Twitter handle and bomb everyone. No. I'm staying off. I, I don't even like going on. Though I've been I've been trying to go on just trying to I'm trying to say more positive stuff. Yeah. Just in, I mean, just trying to be a little bit more I, I noticed that you're probably getting a bit more piper. No. Yeah, you're, you're I just quoted a verse. That's yeah, all I did. I exactly yeah. piper. I said remember and then I quoted the verse. Piper. Boom. That's not piper. That's piper. That's piper, all he does. piper opines. I don't know piper. No, he does not. He does too. He does not. Piper I'm gonna bring up his piper Twitter if you right now. His Twitter is mm-hmm. a walking Yeah. Uh, it doesn't walk. No, no. It's a bad metaphor. I know. I'm, that's what I was trying to think. All it is is Psalms. Okay. Let me just get John Piper here. Yeah. Okay. Psalm this. Just, Psalm that. I'm scripture this. this. Stuff. Scripture. 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 Okay. Too much scripture, Piper. No, the scripture. The scripture is good. All right. He's quoting. I said that's a poem. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't know the poem thing. God does not predict futures created by others. He prophesies futures and performs them. Remember when we talked about unicorns? <laughs> when he talked about it? Yeah, I got to find that tweet. That's long ago. Mm-hmm. It was a day I thought someone needs to hide, someone needs to take Piper's Twitter because he's lost it. I think I even text Barnabas. Yeah, well, the like, KJV. I'm like, I'm like, bro, your dad, something happened to your dad. The KJV talks about unicorns. And that's why. Maybe that's what he was mm-hmm. talking about. No, no, it was like, Jumping over the rainbow, kind of a thing. Oh, I gotta really? Find it. I gotta oh, find he it. was all up in his feels. He w- no, it was it was more than feels. I gotta find it. It was years ago. He was I'm all up in his it. affections. I'm gonna find it. I'm okay. gonna find it. Find find. Hey, somebody find. Do need to find. Hey, somebody find us the John Piper tweet about unicorns. Unicorns or something. It was weird. It was well, weird. if it's not unicorns, if it's something else, you're totally. Is it Pegasus? That's close enough. I think Pegasus and unicorn are pretty close to each other. <laughs> I mean, one has wings, one has horn, but there's still these mythical horse creatures. I'm gonna say that they're in the same thing. Um, Jimmy, if people want to send us questions Mm -hmm. that they would like us to answer on air, how do they do that? Well, uh, you can interact with us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Diva or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can also head to the website, DrVotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some of that gear. Fresh pot every Monday and Thursday. Blog post on Wednesdays. Later. Later.